Back in 2013, I played Payday 2 for the first time. I've enjoyed it thoroughly ever since. I could spend days praising the soundtrack, audiovisual feedback and level design as motivators for my continued interest, but what really kept me hooked was the degree of replayability. Testing new skill layouts with perk decks and individual weapon modifications created a long term cycle of experimentation, testing, refinement and further experimentation. However, six years later updates have slowed to a snail's pace, and the developer is in such dire straits that they could be shut down overnight. As a result, I can't help but feel that things were better back in 2013. Life was simpler, and so was Payday. Customization was still an important element, but options were much more limited without the additions that DLC brought. I vividly remember coming home from school each day to play with my group of friends and see what was new. In the early days, I had fewer qualms surrounding the game, and that has given me a rose-tinted outlook on that time. What I would do to go back and see whether things were as blissful as I remember. Well, I'm still working on the time machine, but in the meantime, I considered an alternative. For a previous video project, I was able to play the original 2007 version of Team Fortress 2. I didn't believe it would be possible to do the same with Payday 2 due to its reliance on Steamworks. How foolish was I, for I humoured the idea recently and found the process of playing the original launch version much easier than expected. Installing and playing older Payday 2 updates is a Steam guide by user Salem, which allows you to play any previous version of the game by using features built into Steam itself. Steam keeps all previous versions of the games they sell, and each is given a manifest ID in the database. All that you have to do is identify the correct ID using the spreadsheet in the guide, enter a single line of code into the developer console, and the files start downloading. From there, it's a simple matter of replacing the existing files with the downloaded ones. Seriously, that's it. It's amazingly straightforward. The guide advises you to back up your existing game files so you can still play the current version. However, I've been running out of storage space due to the amount of footage I've recorded lately, so I just… slap the files on top. I'm in it for the long haul. I opened the Payday 2 client hardly expecting it to work. Well, it did work. Almost. My current save file was incompatible. I backed up my save and deleted the original. I was in. But I'd have to work my way back up all the way from level zero. <gasps> no You're way! Here. It works! It is it absolutely- works. Okay, it is absolutely wild that you can go on Steam, put in a, a code for a release, download the game and still play it. The early hours of playing OG Payday were thrilling and confusing. Oh yeah, they added being able to open the windows on Jewelry Store later. For me, this is like being in 2013 again. And I'm not sure how to feel about that. Oh no, I don't have any. Because you have to unlock them all individually. Only the host may unlock assets. <laughs> Ah, uh, we don't need it. Mark, I don't have enough cash for the code for shutters. Let's see that accuracy. Whoa! 45%! My first impression was that this version was a lot more difficult. That can be attributed to several factors. Of course the lack of skills plays a large role, but I'll get back to that later. The greatest change actually had to do with health. In Fresh Payday 2 you have many options for health regeneration. You can find some in skill trees and there are also numerous perk decks which are built around the mechanic. These are absent in OG. As such, health management becomes the primary focus in any heist, and so the gameplay is generally much more defensive. At times it heavily resembles the previous game, which had several heists where you set up your defense and hold a location. See, the difference is that in um, Payday 2, you, when you're waiting on a drill to finish, you're chucking bags around, and in Payday the Heist, when you're waiting for a drill to finish, you're getting thoroughly f***ed in the arc. The question is, would you rather throw around bags, or...? Well, this concept is particularly prevalent in OG when you consider the typical objectives in its heists. It wasn't called Bag Throwing Simulator for nothing. The lack of collectible gauge courier packages means that downtime during heists is generally unproductive, and with so many time-based objectives, I found myself waiting idly for the next shootout. Though once they arrived, they weren't to be underestimated. At launch, the game's challenge was a major selling point. 
the cooperative FPS that doesn't hold its punches. Fewer units overall are sent your way, but each is far more dangerous when health recovery is only achievable through deployable doctor bags. The same is true of special units, with bulldozers standing as a threat to be feared. There's a dozer! No! No! <laughs> Coordination with your teammates to focus fire on these special units is essential for survival. The comparatively limited weapon modification selection means that guns can't quite reach the incredible damage output that you see in Fresh Payday 2, and as a result enemies have greater survivability. This is a very different kind of payday, one which best demonstrates original game director David Goldfarb's vision for a punishing shooter with light RPG elements. Ah, speaking of which... <laughs> come on, No, nah, we're out, we have to restart. See you boys! <laughs> One of the greatest strengths and weaknesses of OG Payday 2 was that it required multiple players to offer different benefits to the team for success to be realised. The Enforcer carries ammo and boasts incredible health, the Technician brings tools which the entire team can benefit from, such as sentries, the Mastermind offers unparalleled support potential, and the Ghost also exists. One-man armies were far less common in those days, as the game wasn't built around that style of play. Fresh Payday 2 has far more golden bullets than it used to, such as the Grinder Perk Deck, which at one point was so overpowered that the game's meta shifted almost completely from armour to dodge based builds. As these one stop solutions encroached, Payday's RPG elements transitioned from the traditional to the Diablo, where players could experience incredible power fantasies on their lonesome. The skill ceiling in Payday 2 is heavily based on the number of abilities and weapons you have unlocked. To truly assess the difficulty of OG Payday 2, I needed to reach a suitable point in the game's progression before I could comment. I set my sights on a tier 6 skill in a mastermind tree by the name of Inspire. I would argue that throughout the years this has remained the most powerful skill in the game, as it allows you to help your teammates up merely by shouting at them. If multiple players bring this to a heist, congrats, you found the secret to eternal life. Working my way up to this point was not a fast process. Even with a friend, you won't be able to jump into overkill difficulty heists straight off the bat. In Fresh Payday 2 you can easily complete a stealth heist at level 0 to receive a large payday. I've always considered stealth the weaker half of the game, and playing the OG version only justified my gripes. Early heists try to sell the concept of pseudo-stealth, as in they can be completed guns blazing, stealthily, or a hybrid of the two. However, with level layouts that appear primarily action based, much of the early game stealth relies on memorising AI patterns and hoping for good fortune. The inconsistency of AI, all the more egregious in this version, became the source of much frustration, particularly when this version lacks the ability to move civilians. Oh. Holy shit. Oh my god! I don't believe it! We're stealthing Ukrainian job. Ah! Some of the later heists were stealth only, and Shadow Raid remains an example of how stealth can be executed incredibly well when the design doesn't have to additionally pander to a loud approach. Until then, we're left in this version with the admirable but underwhelming half measure approach. Besides, the game's choice to lock pager answers and body bags behind skills made stealth grinding a far less productive venture. In my desire to acquire Inspire, I scoured for what would empower me and devour my cowardice. As my doctor bags improved and I became able to trade in dominated units to bring teammates out of custody, I found the lower difficulty heists more manageable, and began to scale up towards the overkill difficulty level. The skills I acquired were incredibly important, which is why the most gutting omission here is skill sets, which allow you to dramatically leap between different styles of play. The developers chose to provide you only one in OG, to incentivize the construction of partially stealth oriented builds. Skills additionally cost in-game money to acquire, and refunding them only grants you half of what you invested. 
and as such the website Payday2Skills.com received a lot of traffic back in the day for its clean, easy to understand build designing system. It would be several years until the money cost was removed and skill sets implemented to allow for greater experimentation. You're fighting for survival or slinking around. You think you've hit your peak, but there's more to be found. It's a skill cheat. I feel these offer creative ways to mix and match your preferences for days, days upon days. days. It's a step up, got a snack up above what came before. Payday the heist of food near your own logs, nothing, nothing more. more. But this says enemy conversy forces you strip my sample sprinting on or perks. Because you gaze a bit deeper and find many others that comparatively can work. XP boosts, slow as it costs, more cash from small pickups. The location of many makes it seem like this was mix up. up. Tier 6 of mastermind gets near for advice from a pistol hit. Shout it out for if you do, your, your teammates, teammates will be fat and fit. Equal in cost but not in use of skill which just cannot, cannot compare. compare Control freak means if you make more noise civilians will get scared, scared. The cost of tier 6 makes this a mean trick If you, you do, do not pick the right stuff Ghost tier 6 is a joke no mess and especially you when compared to these Spent in any direction or use ECMs to stun enemies. enemies Most pitiful is a lucky charm give a better loot for each, each card, card drop. drop Soon the devs would realize that use of skills would have to stop Rearrange these trees are now once use of skills have been cast, cast out. out First superior and that I can say all that without a doubt Going back is an odd sensation These trees cause tribulation and are without any serration Left an upper aberration <laughs> Oh. It was a breath of fresh air to return to an era long before the film crossovers, playable YouTube celebrities, and GOATs. The playable cast is limited to the original four, and the core cast has a much stronger dynamic than many of the later editions. For example, Hoxton and Wolf give each other nicknames as a carryover from the previous game, but the later reintroduction of the original Hoxton gave him a strong animosity for his Payday 2 replacement. There's nothing wrong with the new additions to the crew, in fact many are sparkling with personality, but the bloated cast does somewhat dilute the entire group's character. Thought I saw my ex-wife and my neighbor, fucked up right? This version of Payday tried to edge closer to realism, so heists are a lot smaller in scope, with less of the glamour, grandeur and high-flying set pieces that the first game bathed in. And though most people do agree that the later introduction of more impressive heists was a good decision, there's something quite charming about the OG's simplicity. The same can be said of the soundtrack, an absolute masterclass in video game composition by none other than Simon Vicklund. He made his name composing for the Payday series, and for good reason. Payday 2's soundtrack is highly focused on punchy, energetic electronic soundscapes that transition between quieter and louder phases to match the gameplay. Each track is easily good enough to enjoy outside of the game, a challenge not often overcome by dynamic soundtracks. As other composers would later aid in bolstering the OST, Vicklund himself also used his talents to great effect to expand the musical identity of the franchise, delving into drum and bass, jazz, dubstep, 80s rock, synthwave and many other genres to create one of the most ambitious and successful soundtracks I've ever encountered. Knowing this, you may think that returning to the early days would be somewhat underwhelming, but the laser focus of the launch version soundtrack in creating a gritty electronic sound gives it a beautiful consistency. The visual style also reflects this grittier direction, with darker, shinier enemy models I actually found much harder to pick out from the background. Performance across the board was surprisingly good, incredible load times and much less hitching overall. Fresh Payday 2 hasn't held up so well, between the user-made mods, the increased number of game assets overall, and heists trying to push the poor old Diesel 2 engine to its limits. Generally, returning to base 1 sustained this odd sensation of familiarity, but with very noticeable changes which were fun to look out for. Several hours in though, the allure of the game's pure form began to wane, and little niggling issues began to creep their way into the experience. As I grew in strength, I felt the temptation to return to the power fantasy that modern payday allows, and that grew ever stronger each time I was decimated by bulldozers. I hold a soft spot for the cast and voice acting in this game, but my god if they never shut up. Bane constantly wires you instructions, no matter how straightforward they may be, and the jarring shift between the Bane we all know and love and the older, lower quality lines makes it that much harder to ignore. 
This one is not. Guys, the thermal drill. Don't get it. Uh, that was 50 seconds into the heist. It took 50 seconds. For the words, guys, the thermal drill, go get it. I took much amusement from Dallas's endless Sakovian encouragement. Fight for survival! Don't get loose with it now! We'll make him remember the day they fought the payday gang. <laughs> the payday gang! At least with the core cast, you don't have the issue of missing lines that plagued many of the new character additions throughout the game's life. A problem further exacerbated by Wolf voice actor Ulf Anderson's departure from the company. Well, except for those moments where lines are missing, such as sniper callouts. These lines were recorded and were meant to be implemented, but at launch, they didn't work. One thing has changed little over these years, and that's the amount of good old Payday 2 jank. I'll get a feel for it. Oh, what have I done? It only took that long for me to crash the game. <laughs> How is he seeing me? How is he seeing me? What? What is that? <laughs> uh, what on earth is that sound? <laughs> now we're gonna have to deal with the cops. Oh, the cops disabled the drill. Okay, um, I can't explain what just happened there. Let's leave. Oh, I missed these. Oh, I missed that so much. The glass that just doesn't have an animation, it just disappears when you hit it. I can still hear the saw. <laughs> it hasn't stopped. <laughs> Let's go into another heist. I want to see if it keeps going. <laughs> AI in general is awful, with the computer team it's proving incompetent at almost every turn. Their milling about isn't helped by the severe desync problems, often seen when they would seemingly help me up from across the map. Time now. Hoxton is not coming to me. Oh, he's, he's got you. Gonna get here in time? No, he's not. Oh, wait, what? Oh my god, this is so. so buggy. Civilians can't seem to understand when to stay down, and at low levels losing any money from collateral can be crippling. After multiple infamy levels of progression, I had forgotten just how limited money was at the start. It was during these early heists that I discovered that cable tying civilians actually delays the assault wave, and killing them can trigger snipers to spawn on some maps. I've managed to go half a decade without knowing this, which conveys one of Payday 2's biggest problems, one that was unavoidable at launch. It doesn't explain things properly. The OG tutorial is really, really bad. Before the nightclub tutorial was added, and long before the new safe house, you were expected to waltz into the old safe house, listen to Bane wax lyrical for a couple of minutes, maybe open a safe or two, shoot some doors, and that was basically everything. Look up, catch! I caught it. <laughs> nice okay. catch! You ready for this? Show Don't Tell only works if you actually show something, and early payday especially suffered from this oversight. Skills have no values. Inspire has a 75% chance of working. Does it tell you that? Nope. Your total ammo capacity is increased. By how much? The lower your health, the more damage you do in melee. There's two important values that are missing there. Your weapon mobility is increased with all rifles. Do you see what I mean? Wait, wait, hold on. One second, what is mobility? All right, let's have a look. Oh, oh, what is that? This hardly tells me anything. Oh, the Amcar apparently has decent accuracy and damage. That damage doesn't look very decent. Why the bloody hell is it called recoil? That makes it the only one in the list you want to be lower. That visibility meter is pretty disgusting. And seriously, what is mobility? Oh, okay, it's the weapon accuracy when hip firing. I like how I had to open a web browser just to find that out. There is a lot of things that just aren't explained, like what Offshore does. I'll spoil it for you, it does nothing. 
Originally, you'd be able to spend it in an offshore payday that periodically appears, and gives you a chance to get certain items of your choosing in return. But this wasn't introduced until a little later, so offshore is meaningless here. I sorely missed the feature to buy contracts with offshore money, as it left waiting around as my only option, hoping the right heist would appear on the menu in one of the more baffling RNG reliant aspects of OG. Random number generation can also be found in the pseudo random object placements in heists, the random awards at the end of heists, skills which rely on percentage chance to work, such as inspire, the chance for flashbangs to appear, the presence of additional escapes following a completed heist, and even the music selection. Several of these still exist in Fresh, but OG's Game of Numbers further complements Payday 2's original vision as a shooter RPG hybrid. One other aspect it borrows from role-playing games is the incessant grinding. Several hours after the honeymoon phase passed, I was still nowhere near to achieving Inspire. I tried loading someone else's old Payday 2 save file, only to discover that saves were restricted to the user who made them. At this point I became desperate, and my actions that followed would funnily enough bring me closer to classic Payday than anything else I had experienced. I began to metagame, to find the best ways to earn XP quickly. It's worth noting that base Payday 2 didn't offer particularly many heists. Ten unique ones with some slight variations on top. This selection would become even more restrictive as I began grinding Ukrainian job. I actually remember players endlessly working away at this heist, because it offered far better experience for time than others. What followed was years of back and forth between the players and developers. The payout for Ukrainian job was reduced, so everybody moved to rats. The strategy here was to destroy the meth lab and then ignore the money on day 3 in order to rush through as quickly as possible. Experience was changed to be heavily based on loot acquisition, but a new strategy had been devised to stealth the new diamond store heist to gain a considerable XP bonus that could then be used on rats. Finally, Overkill implemented a system to punish replaying the same heist repeatedly, and though this did greatly increase the selection of worthwhile heists, people will always find new ways to cheat the system to maximise takings. Now this makes it sound much more exciting than it really was, because what followed for me were hours upon hours of the same heist watching a number slowly increase. The game is not meant to be played this way, and delirium quickly set in. Vlad really doesn't like this Dimitri guy. Vlad! One of these old country feuds. Vlad, really? One of those old country feuds. From the shagged his sister or something. Vlad shagged his sister or something. <laughs> One of those old country feuds. <laughs> Vlad shagged Dimitri. Vlad really doesn't like this Dimitri guy. More like botch job. <laughs> Vlad really doesn't like the East Midlands. <laughs> 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 it's probably because um, he was Welsh and he was in Yorkshire. <laughs> One of those old country uh, feuds. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he shagged the sheep or something. <laughs> oh, oh. At this point, I regretted not investing points in technician, which would have given me tools to complete the job much more quickly. I must have spent 20 to 30 hours in total with the game just to reach Inspire, but to reach it, I did. Finally, the tool that would unleash my true power. I had progressed up the power ratings, but now was my chance to go super. Eh, it was okay, I guess. I mean, it's Inspire. It works almost identically to how it does today, and though it certainly made me more capable in OG, it didn't completely shake up the experience. The game was still more challenging than the same difficulties in Fresh Payday 2, especially with a greater focus on teamwork, but Payday 2 now has several higher difficulties to address the power creep it faced. Is this an anticlimax? Yes, of course it is! I went back to an interesting but ultimately inferior version of a game that I've played so extensively that I could have detailed all of this without sinking tens of hours into it. But goddamn, I wanted an experience out of it, and it was absolutely worth it. I played it with a good friend of mine, who I used to play Payday extensively with, and in doing so we did manage to rekindle some of the old feelings we had for the game and bask in the nostalgia. It's so incredibly tempting to just go back to how things were, but that's an impossible feat. 
The best we can do is reminisce and try and relive those great experiences. And that's exactly what we did here. Hell, you hardly need to download an older client to manage that. You can just play on Death Wish or Death Sentence difficulty in Modern Payday 2 and get many of the same feelings of intense, defensive play that made the game so wonderful in the first place. Then again, there is something to be said about unvaulting something you once thought locked away, no matter how trivial it proves to be. There's nothing wrong with pursuing the past, so long as you accept that you can't wallow in it forever. 